coming up on Great Day. Treating infertility problems can be expensive. We'll tell you how one clinic is helping people to cut the cost so they can finally have something that's priceless, a baby. When that child reaches school age, do you know what vaccinations they'll need before the school bell rings? We'll tell you. And when you were a kid, you probably didn't worry about wrinkles. It's okay. Today we'll show you a non-surgical way to get rid of them in just a few seconds, live on the air. Great day starts now. And now, here's your host, Deborah Duncan. Welcome to Great Day Houston. It is Medical Monday, all about improving our health. So let's meet our panel. Pharmacist Gina Eubank from HEB Pharmacy. Dr. Dan Williams is from the Houston Fertility Institute. Dr. Monique Jenkins joins us from the Center for Healthy Hearing. And Dr. Richard Laconi is with us with the Institute of Anti-Aging. He is also an emergency room doctor. Please welcome them to the show today. All right, before we get to each of their specific topics today, we're starting off with a segment that we call an audience. You know what you're supposed to do now? Okay, this segment is called, What's, What's Up, up Doc? Very good. Okay, in just a matter of weeks, thousands of children will be heading back to school, and we're learning changes are on the way when it comes to handling swine flu scares this year. And I'll start with you, Dr. Laconi, because uh, oftentimes in the emergency room, when those cases show up, that's where they show up. Well, that is one of the primary places that they can uh, uh, hit the medical system, mm -hmm. and uh, we certainly see them. Uh, we saw a few in the, in the last uh, epidemic. Uh, this is going to be an off-season epidemic. That's the nature of this disorder. So, so what do you mean by off-season? Off-season. Well, the normal uh, flu season is going to be kind of midwinter, somewhat November, December, January, and on. Mm -hmm. Whereas this could very well be just anywhere from a few weeks after school starts to even a month or so, and it could even come back in the spring. So it is a uh, it's an off-season flu. It's the nature of the N1. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, so, one of the things that we've heard that they're going to change is, remember last year, people kind of freaked out and thought, oh my goodness, this is good, you know, we have to close the schools down if there's one case or what we think is one case. They were shutting schools down. Some changes this year? Well, that, they've decided that that was uh, a little bit too, uh, too aggressive. Uh, now they're going to, of course, quarantine the sick individuals, mm -hmm. send them home, in other words, and, uh, it, you know, keep an eye on the rest of the student body and watch for sporadic, you know, uh, pop-ups. If it's just sporadic, and uh, it looks like it's the, 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 quant the quarantine concept is working, then the school will continue functioning. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, if it gets to a real epidemic situation where uh, a large percentage of the children mm -hmm. are getting sick, then they'll have to take that step, right. send them all home. All right, and Gina, uh, the course, the, the thing that we have to fight with, fight back with now is an actual vaccine. Is that ready to go? The vaccine, um, it's coming out. They have 160 million doses that are coming out. Um, I'm sorry, 1.6 million dose, doses that are coming out in October. And the problem, the challenge that they're having with this is they're getting one third the yield mm -hmm. in the production that they normally do from the regular flu. So once it comes out, then they have to do the studies and they want to see if it, what dose it's going to require to actually protect a person against this vaccine. Yeah. And whether it's a small dose or a high dose, and hopefully, you know, it'll be a small dose, so then, you know, there's not a shortage of it. Yeah, talking such... about that, though, so we can't necessarily rely on that. So no. there are other things that we have to rely on. Let me ask you this, because I know that when it came out last year, or a few months ago, uh, there were several people who were running to the pharmacy to get things like Tamiflu mm -hmm. uh, to try and combat it. Why does that work or not work? Well, I mean, your best strategy is, you know, be cognizant of your body and if you're starting to have symptoms then immediately act but you know as far as hoarding Tamiflu and things like that I mean it, it's it's not necessary I mean take precautions if teach your children how to sneeze mm -hmm. I mean you know yeah, when they sneeze go chew you know not with their hands and then they touch everything right and you know, it, it's you just know, the problem with that we were talking about earlier. Everyone thinks that their sneeze is okay, right? <laughs> it's the other people's sneezes that are not okay. It, it, exactly, and you know, or even coughing, cough mm -hmm. like that. And it's it's very simple because at the pharmacy, someone will come in and they'll do a sneeze or a cough, and people just poof, they spread, especially with all this, you know, swine flu yeah. going on. Uh, the Tamiflu, you know, they've found that it has been very effective with this and so if you're cognizant of your symptoms and your body and as soon as you start having you know the the fever the aches any of that because the onset's quick take action go to your doctor because you must you know receive the Tamiflu right 
but you, you said something very important. Go to your doctor, because I'm going to tell you what I saw people doing um, the last time this came out. And if they had leftover, uh, yeah, leftover antibiotics, they're thinking, I'll just load up on that. Big problem with loading up on antibiotics when you haven't necessarily been diagnosed. Well, and antibiotics are for bacteria. Okay, this is a virus. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you might as well take salt and throw it over your shoulder. It serves no purpose, and it kills your, your good bacteria. So, I mean, you're worse off. Yeah. You are worse <laughs> off. So not a winning strategy. All right. Uh, Dr. Williams, in your area of study, there have been some advances made when it comes to fertility and then uh, eggs. So what's, what's the new thing on the horizon here? I think the most exciting uh, change that we've developed is uh, oocyte freezing or egg freezing. Mm -hmm. We've always been able to freeze sperm and embryos. Eggs have been much more difficult to freeze until recently. Yeah, and so like what kind of time frame are we talking that you can keep those eggs? Uh, indefinitely. Really? In liquid nitrogen. Wow, and this is also used uh, for a lot of people, for example, someone who's been diagnosed with cancer. Yes. Who feels like they would like to have children later on. What would be the process there? Basically, they go through an IVF or in vitro fertilization procedure, and the eggs are actually uh, rapidly frozen after retrieval, mm -hmm. and then they're stored until the patient is ready, either cleared of her cancer or ready to conceive. Yeah, we're also finding, because we don't necessarily do what uh, they did, you know, 50 or so years ago, is that we're not necessarily coming out of our parents' house and getting married as much as we used to. And so women are coming out, we've got our career and the whole bit, and around 35, 38, we find that man of our dreams, and then we decide a couple of years later we want to have a baby, and then mm, it could be a little bit tougher. So there are actually some women who are saying, I'm I'm just going to take care of my eggs now because I haven't found Mr. Right, and I'm going to freeze them, and they'll be available when I need them. This is true. It allows women the possibility or option now to bank eggs as men used to bank sperm or still do. All right. Dr. Jenkins, uh, the whole issue of hearing and hearing. Most of us, the last time we had our hearing test was probably when? In elementary school? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, I remember that and whatever happened to that. Uh, but it's a very serious problem. It a lot of times goes undetected. I know a little boy who was uh, couldn't hear in class, and no one figured it out. They went through everything. They went through learning disabled. They tested him for all kinds of things and then found out he just can't hear very well. Mm -hmm. Well, the new topic uh, in our field is... Um, the hearing aid tax credit. Mm -hmm. uh, most insurance companies, Medicare does not pay for hearing aids mm -hmm. and most insurance companies do not pay. Um, so uh, the bill, there's a bill on the table that is trying to be passed for uh, hearing aid tax credit yeah. where they will give you $500 per hearing aid and it's tax deductible. Yeah, because that's one of the things that stops people from getting the help they need once they find out what the problem is. Right, it's the expense of the hearing aids. And also to the family members who may purchase for a family member. Okay, and so this is important for all kinds of reasons, although that cost may sound prohibitive in the beginning, mm -hmm. that people realize it's like loss of income, all mm -hmm. kinds of things associated with loss of hearing. Correct. All mm -hmm. right, Dr. Laconi, we're coming to the end of the summer. We had all those people laying out there and then all of a sudden getting their golden tan and then all of a sudden they're looking in the mirror going, wait a minute. Now, a lot of times that sun damage shows up much later, but uh, yes. there's some new things in, in your other field of study and, and practice uh, that can help us erase those, those years of skin damage. Well, you know, I think we're, we're, this is the good time of year that people who are coming, you might say, off the sun exposure season, the summer mm -hmm. season, uh, we see a lot of people kind of get back interested in doing uh, something to erase the sun damage. Right. We have our active FX CO2 laser, which is now really the uh, total FX because we use the deep FX, which helps shrink the, the skin down a little bit and tighten the tissue and get rid of the laxity, as well as the active FX, which is traditionally very good for eliminating the brown spots and fine lines. Yeah. So this we call the total FX. It's a fractional laser, has a four day recovery time. It's, uh, I'd say, pretty reasonable considering the incredible results of one time procedure unlike some of the other treatments which are five or six. Right, right. This is a one-time deal. Can this also address uh, skin cancer? Well, you know, it could be. I, I would send that to uh, a specialist mm -hmm. and they would still use specialized techniques, but yes, you can use a laser to destroy it, but more often they're, uh, they're excising it. But they do a technique where you can examine the border of the skin cancer as they go to make sure they catch it all. All right, so that's up. That's what's up with some of our docs. If you have any questions, by the way, we'll let you know today for our medical staff this morning. They'll be in our studio throughout the show. You can email your questions to greatdayhouston at khou.com, and they will answer them. Coming up, are the signs of aging showing up on your face? We'll show you how to reverse the effects live on the air when we come back. Ooh.